Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you are watching Laws in the Making on Rajya Sabha TV. Today on the show, we will be discussing the Consumer Protection Bill 2019. The bill intends to replace the Consumer Protection Act of 1986 that was made to safeguard consumer rights by establishing a grievance redressal mechanism at the district, state and national level. To discuss the bill I have on the show with me, Bijan Mishra, founder Consumer Online Foundation, Ricky Chopra, advocate High Court of Delhi, and Roshni Sinha, analyst at PRS Legislative Research. The Consumer Protection Bill 2019 safeguards consumer rights. It provides a mechanism for complaint redressal in the case of defective goods or deficiency in services. Consumer markets have gone through a change since 1986, and consumers are now prone to different kinds of unfair trade practices and misleading advertisements. To meet these challenges, the bill establishes three types of bodies. Consumer Dispute Redressal Commissions, Consumer Protection Councils at the district, state and national level, and it also sets up the Central Consumer Protection Authority. The bill allows consumers to ask for compensation from any manufacturer if any harm has been caused in the form of property damage, personal injury, illness or death, mental agony or emotional harm. Consumers can also make a claim against manufacturer, seller or service provider for defective product or deficient services. Many new developments have come up. Now we have e-commerce, now we have e-filing, now we have mediation. So all these concerns have been taken care of in the new bin. And one of the biggest problems which consumers have is misleading advertisements and celebrities endorsing such ads. So the bill takes care of this aspect also. There are penalties for advertisers, for uh, publishers, for endorsers, for everyone. The bill lists out conditions that can be defined as an unfair contract or unfair trade practice. The contract that requires excessive security deposit terminates a contract without the reasonable cause or transfers a contract with a third party without consumer's consent is defined as an unfair contract. The bill declares such contract null and void. The Consumer Protection Authority would be a judicial uh, uh, authority and it would be working in same terms as the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission in America. And uh, this uh, authority would have uh, uh, sumoto powers, that is it can intervene if it finds that something is going wrong and uh, it would be protecting the rights of, of the consumers. Now if uh, there is some misleading advertisement then, or unfair trade practice or an unfair contract, in these cases it would be intervening, even it would have the authority to recall the products if it finds that some product is substandard or in case of spurious, we find that in case of online shopping also, one out of five products, then you find that they are duplicates. So uh, the, these authorities will have the power to intervene because many times when you go to the consumer for us, then you get the redressal very late. The bill defines the unfair practices that infringe on consumer rights. These include sold goods that don't comply with standards or when the seller refuses to refund goods or services within 30 days or discloses personal information provided by a consumer to any other person. The Central Consumer Protection Authority established under the bill may take steps to discontinue such unfair practices. When the 1986 Consumer Protection Act was made, there were laws already in place both for preventive and punitive punishments for protecting consumer rights. Uh, Mr. Mishra, you were involved in the framing of the original 1986 Act. Can you walk us through what have the developments from 1986 till now that have led to government bringing a new bill in Parliament to replace the Consumer Protection Act? You see, th thanks for inviting me. <clears throat> Uh, the most important thing what has happened is that from 86 to now 2019, there has been a lot of lessons learned. See, when we enacted the law, we wanted to ensure that consumers get their redressal promptly. And we were not looking at actually compensation. We were looking at either a good refund policy and an exchange policy. But then subsequently, you know, we all put in the word compensation and we looked at compensation very closely to uh, ensure that there is a deterrent you know on the on people who are practicing unfair trade practice the the biggest change which happened was the awareness 
you know that triggered awareness the law and plethora of consumers came in before the courts at the district level state commission national commission you know to seek redress so what we could understand is that now this comprehensive law this authority which is being brought into a place why did we need this authority because we wanted to ensure that a common consumer who buys a product or a service say for 200 rupees is not made to run from pillar to post to seek that refund or the money uh, or an exchange so this authority is now being empowered to do a class action and the consumer organizations did not have the resources to do that most of them so what the government in their wisdom has now figured out is that this new law 2019 not only should be comprehensive it should bring in efficiency and effectiveness you know and we are expecting this is going to become a game changer you know for the consumer movement in india for the consumers in india and for even the consumers who are globally there who are coming to india say for tourism purpose or uh, today you know uh, world is the village so uh, everybody comes and buys products where import and export is uh, prevalent so what we want to see is that india becomes the leading you know champion on consumer protection in the coming years Mr. Chopra, one of the things that the 1986 Act did was that it established a specialized mechanism at the district, state, and national level for redressal only for consumer complaints. Okay. Earlier, they, if there were consumer complaints, they used to go through the normal judicial channel. Right. In your experience as a practicing lawyer, what has been the lessons that has been learned over the years, you know, during the adjudication of the Consumer Protection Act in the courts in India? Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a very good question because I've seen in my practice. for the past many many years that consumers didn't know what uh, forum to approach they had no idea what pecuniary jurisdiction lies with what forum so they would have a case in hand which would be for a couple of crores but they would be going to the district forum and uh, they had no idea that that wouldn't be the right forum so this uh, bill what it does is very clearly defines what is the pecuniary ju uh, jurisdiction of each uh, forum for example if you have a case uh which is above 10 cr then it is very clear in this bill that you have to go uh, to the national consumer forum so i think this will help a lot consumer know before they approach for any legal help or they approach any forum that where the jurisdiction lies i think that's one of the biggest achievements of this bill okay roshni you know uh, mr chopra was talking about you know what is the financial mandate when it comes to adjudication of disputes Right. what are some of the other things that the bill is doing slightly differently sure. from the 1986 act okay um so like mr bejon mishra was mentioning there has been a need to update the law because the current 1986 law is now uh, over 30 years old uh, and so there have been several new players in the regulatory landscape like e-commerce entities direct sellers who want a part of the 86 regulation but needed to be uh, captured in the regulatory framework Uh, so the update updating the law was one of the uh, challenges before the new bill uh, the other aspect is there were some new provisions that uh, were being deliberated upon and some of these were for instance uh, product liability actions which is essentially if there was an actual injury or harm suffered by a consumer because of a defect in a good or deficiency in a service uh, there was no specific provision for compensation for that kind of a product liability and attaching that product liability to the service provider or the manufacturer of the goods and the bill is looking to uh, actually impose that product liability on the manufacturer or the service provider and this you can see in the context of for instance harm suffered because of you know your cell phones have uh, batteries which explode that is an example of where this can be used uh, the other aspect is the ability to set aside the terms of unfair contracts which are essentially uh, contracts which have terms where you are charging uh, disproportionate penalties or excessive uh, uh, security deposits for instance you'll see that in certain cities you'll see that the security deposits demanded by uh, you know landlords are significantly higher than the normal practice and so to capture that and un empower the commissions to set aside the terms of those contracts this provision was made and if i can finally get into the regulator uh, the bill also provides for regulator and again like mr mishra has pointed out the purpose of the regulatory body is to take prevent the vaccine and make interventions on behalf of a class of consumers and not wait for a violation of a individual right to take place and go to the commission before you can take action okay 
Mr. Mishra, you talked about class action suits. Roshni is talking about class action suits. Can you just explain for our viewers what does it mean by having somebody to institute class action suits? I thought uh, my rights can yeah, only be represented no, no, by no, my like, lawyers. Like for example, let me tell you. Uh, for example, I work a lot on the health sector. So you implant a defective, you know, implant, uh, you know, uh, device in, in your body. And that turns out to be defective or substandard and globally established. And there are several patients who are suffering because of the defective medical device. Now, if you want each individual patient to go and claim compensation, it will be very cumbersome and tedious and long drawn. So now what we are expecting is a new law coming in. You know, the, uh, the authority will take immediate cognizance of such happenings in our country which earlier were not taken into consideration. So globally, if there is an alert on certain substandard product, which is a global brand and used globally and established that a particular batch was found to be defective, then all the people who are affected by that would get covered, which was not there earlier. And probably the idea would also be that this authority will then have the resources to not only fight this litigation against... Absolutely, uh, Mr. You, you are absolutely right, bang on, because you see, what the biggest uh, handicap, the barrier we as consumer groups had was lack of resources. We can't engage, you know, luminary lawyers. You know, you know how much, ex how expensive they are, you know, but the government can on, 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 on our behalf. behalf. Okay, perfect. I think that's, you know, that's just the right time to, for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will discuss the different bodies established under the bill. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the Consumer Protection Bill 2019. The bill provides for protection of consumer rights by providing an efficient mechanism for redressal of complaints regarding defects in goods and deficiency in services. The bill establishes consumer courts when rights of consumers have been harmed by an unfair contract or trade practice. These courts will be established at a district, state and national level with different monetary jurisdiction. State commissions will hear appeals from district commissions, while appeals from state commissions will be heard by national commissions. To ensure speedy disposal, the commissions will attempt to dispose of a complaint within three months. If analysis and testing is required, the complaint will be disposed of within five months. So redressal mechanism was available in the earlier act also. But here the powers of district forum, which is now called as district commission, they have been increased. Now it will have, uh, it can take up cases up to 1 crore of rupees and state commission up to 10 crore and national commission above 10 crores. So all kinds of consumers can file on online complaints. There are provisions for mediation in each and every consumer commission. The bill sets up the Central Consumer Protection Authority or CCPA to promote, protect and enforce the rights of consumers. The body can issue safety notices for goods and services, order refunds, recall goods and rule against misleading advertisements. Additionally, it sets up Consumer Protection Councils or CPCs at district, state and national levels as advisory bodies. The councils will advise on promotion and protection of consumer rights. If a consumer is uh, uh, harmed by any product or say any untoward or incorrect advertising or marketing, the bill provides very clearly for him to approach the commissions which fall into the jurisdiction and uh, you know, file a petition or a complaint for the resolution of that problem. They could also approach, as I said earlier, to the central authority which could then on their behalf approach the commission and get the grievances of the consumer solved. The bill includes penalties for manufacturers, sellers or service providers for indulging in unfair contracts or unfair trade practices. If a person doesn't comply with orders of the district, state or national commissions, he may face imprisonment up to three years or a fine extendable to rupees one lakh or both. 
If a person doesn't comply with the CCPA's order, he may face imprisonment of up to six months or fine of up to 20 lakh or both. The CCPA may impose a penalty on manufacturer or an endorser of up to rupees 10 lakh and imprisonment for up to two years for a false or misleading advertisement. In case of a subsequent offence, the fine may extend up to 50 lakh and imprisonment of up to five years. The Consumer Protection Bill was originally introduced in the 16th Lok Sabha. It was referred to a parliamentary standing committee and the standing committee gave a number of recommendations. One of the recommendations that the standing committee gave was for penalizing you know, individuals who endorsed uh, products or services uh, provided. Uh, Roshni, do you want to come in and talk a little bit about you know, what is that provision? which sure. uh, provides for this punishment? Sure. So, uh, in the 2015 version of the bill, uh, there was uh, specific penalties on manufacturers, on advertisers for false and misleading advertisement, but uh, there was no specific mention of endorsers. And endorsers are essentially, the idea was, uh, the standing committee which looked at the bill was looking at public personalities or celebrities who are brand ambassadors of such advertisements uh, which turn out to be false and misleading and whether there was a need to actually impose any penalty for them for being ambassadors of such products. Um, so the committee looked at it and recommended that there should be some penalties on endorsers. And so finally it, it, the 2018 version which is identical to the version that uh, the parliament is deliberating now is, uh, is uh, basically imposes that kind of a penalty on endorsers and says that if they are found to be endorsing an uh, advertisement which turns out to be false and misleading, they can be prohibited from advertising for up to a period of one year and for subsequent offences up to a period of three years. So those are some of the penalties that may be imposed upon endorsers. Ricky, we heard your comments earlier. Right. Is that a fair penalty or do you think something more needs to be done? No, I think it's a very fair penalty and nothing <laughs> more needs to be done because if you are holding accountable someone who without thinking or examining is endorsing, marketing, advertising something, when he knows or she knows that uh, his remark or his ad would influence a lot of people who would buy some uh, services or buy some goods, just because he's endorsing it, he must be punished. And I think uh, the quantum of punishment is enough, both pecuniarily and uh, you know, sentence-wise. And I think uh, it's a very well-established uh, mechanism that way. Okay. Mr. Mishra, you want to step in? I, I know you're itching to you know, <laughs> have your comments on this. No, I, no I, I, uh, you see, uh, as a um, kind of a, an activist being in the, in the consumer protection domain for 35 years, you know, I, I would not like to become a barrier in, in moving forward. So, we wanted a very stringent kind of a action against such endorsers because they take huge hefty uh, fees when they endorse. So, it's a commercial business they are engaged in. So, th there is a kind of a, a partnership with the product and the endorser. So, why, why should we differentiate between an endorser and an ad advertiser? So, they both should be equally responsible. So, whatever uh, the, uh, the courts would uh, sort of uh, Im, uh, impose as uh, penalty, I, I'm sure both should be equally made responsible to pay that compensation. So, the endorser has to be very careful in, in the coming uh, years, uh, once this uh, law comes into place, that you don't give misleading messages to the citizens, to the consumers. You have to ensure that you are very responsible and we don't mind you being party to a responsible message which creates awareness and which creates knowledge about that product and the consumer takes a very informed decision based on such endorsements and the endorsements actually ensures that you have a right to choice you know and you choose based on credible information you know that is what we always wanted and we are looking forward to so i am sure you know the responsible endorsers will now become extremely careful. They will not endorse anything as what is being told to them by the advertiser. Okay. You know. Roshni, you have been examining this bill you know, ever since it was introduced in Lok Sabha. What is the changes that you see between the 2015 bill and the 2019 bill that has now been introduced? Sure. So, when the 2015 bill was introduced, uh, like we discussed, there were some provisions on whether any liability needs to be affixed to endorsers of advertisements. Uh, there were some additional considerations that, the, that were before the standing committee. Um, some of them were also clause specific, such as, uh, you know, whether the 
uh, regulator proposals, CCPA, should have any investigation wing to really empower them to be able to investigate cases uh, of consumer complaints. Uh, so these were some of the issues that they, the standing committee was looking at. And uh, in fact, the 28, so in fact, after the standing committee tabled its report, the government withdrew the bill. And uh, three years later in 2018, introduced a revised version of the bill which incorporated many of the recommendations of the standing committee and some of the technical uh, sort of seeming errors for instance there was no product liability clause for services it was only there for goods those kind of uh, changes were made in the revised version of the bill and the 2019 bill uh, pretty much is similar to what the 2018 version of the bill is and incorporates and aligns itself with many of the recommendations of the standing committee okay Ricky, as a practicing advocate you deal with statutes on a daily basis. Now, you know, what are the kind of implementation challenges that come when you're implementing a law of this scale uh, in our judicial system? See, I, I'd say, you know, this act is, the old act has been repealed, the new one has been brought forth. I wouldn't see a lot of challenges because most of it is already in place as, you know, as implementation is concerned. But I definitely see, you know, uh, there will be challenges in regard to education of the people education of the people about the new commissions, education about the new provisions like law of consortium which has been added or unfair trade practice or restrictive trade practice and uh, my panelists just uh, 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 mentioned about unfair contracts. So, so I think education of the consumer is a big challenge in, in the whole scenario and if the commission or the authority does a good job or a great job in that, that will be a big help for the consumer. Uh, Mr. Bijan Mishra, consumer education is key, yeah. uh, disposal rates are high, but one of the things is, do people know that they have rights under this law? That's what right. can be done to increase consumer education? Yeah, you know, I always said, you know, uh, an aware consumer is a protected consumer. You see, there is a big chunk in, in, in terms of the role of the state government. Any law, you know, like the consumer protection law, if, if we want to make it efficient and effective, the states have to respond in an equal manner, you know, in terms of showing the political will that they want to build in a consumer protection uh, element in their governance, in all their activities, commercial activities. So, the state governments have to spend a lot of time in bringing in this awareness, which unfortunately, as of today, the states do not look at consumer protection as a top priority. You know, uh, and, and in my view, if you want to become a $5 trillion uh, economy, then you have to bring in consumer protection in a big way, you know, and all the states have to align by that to take it forward because it can't be only driven by the central government, the states have to come in. And what do you think will be the role of, uh, you know, the protection councils, the consumer protection councils at the district, state and national level in that? No, this is what I, uh, what I meant was that there, ha there are instances where for years together, the members are not appointed. The courts don't function. The consumers are running pillar to post. Now, we are expecting that this authority, which is going to come into place at the central level, they would have maybe, you know, have some kind of benches or some kind of a working, uh, you know, uh, offices out of the states, where they will make the states also becoming very proactive with the, with the central authority. So, we are hoping that the states will come in a very big way and ensure that there is no delay in redressal. You see, the, the crust of consumer protection law is prompt redressal, you know, the, uh, give, bringing that wow factor to the consumer. You know, that I, I bought something which was substandard and it got exchanged or I got the money back promptly, you know, uh, without me raising an issue, you know, uh, much of an issue. And uh, the companies, the, com uh, the service providers, you know, the manufacturers, they also have to become proactive. The Chamber of Commerce, they have to become very proactive to ensure that none of their members violate any kind of an ethical norm in terms of trade practices. Okay. Roshni, I wanted to come back and, you know, one of the things that you raised earlier on was uh, an expansion in the consumer, uh, you know, base. And that expansion has happened because of online players also coming in. Does the bill talk about coverage of some of these players? So, the bill actually does cover uh, e-commerce entities and direct sellers, uh, but there is only one provision in the bill which talks about them and it uh, essentially leaves it to be decided by regulation. Okay. So, so the central government and the state government will have much more independence in deciding right. as to how they can be regulated and what kind of cases can go to courts. Yeah, actually, you see, when you frame the 
you know um, the rules of the law that is when the clarity will come in and uh, they have defined the various players in, in the term consumer where they have said uh, like direct selling will also come in e-commerce will come in you know uh, home delivery any kind of a any format of retailing you know comes into the consumer protection law now you know which was not there earlier because technology has become a very big enabler for a consumer you know to reach out so i think the rules will bring in uh, the clarity in terms of their functioning and how the definition will be implemented so the details are as important as the framework Absolutely. Ricky, one of the things that i wanted to you know explore is we always talk about a law and we also talk about what will be the impact of this law on stakeholders. So what is the impact that you visualize on product sellers or manufacturers with the coming of the you know, 2019? Uh, I think uh, the bill is very stringent in that aspect. The concept of product liability, the concept of misleading advertising. And then they have interlinked the IPC and the you know, other, other acts uh, with it. Uh, so the bill is very robust in that way and I believe it will impose a lot of responsibility not only on the manufacturers, but the agents, the traders, the direct sellers. So I think uh, everyone will have to think twice about doing anything which is untowardly or not beneficial for the consumer. So I think a lot of pressure on the people at the first trying to understand the law, but I think eventually it will make them realize that it's good for the business as well because everything gets streamlined, everything gets, you know, uh, comes in the legal purview. So it gives a very robust mechanism for the trade, for commerce to happen. Rashti, what do you think will be the impact on consumers? Right. So, um, I think one of the key principles that un underlies the consumer protection law is prompt redressal. And there is a grievance redressal mechanism set out at the district, state and national level. One of the things that this bill is doing is to increase the pecuniary values up to which the district commission can hear matters. Which means that more people can approach their local district court to uh, take their grievance. But one of the questions that's perhaps left unaddressed is the fact that uh, the qualifications of the members and the president of each of these commissions has been left to a decision by the central government through rules. Um, this is in contrast with the existing 1986 law which says that the commission always has to be headed by a judicial member, a person qualified to be a judge. And one of the questions is considering the kind of uh, disputes that these courts are adjudicating, is this something that should have been set out in the law itself that the person uh, who is a part of the commission should be somebody who is judicially trained and qualified. Okay. Mr. Bajan Mishra, you know, we always talk about, you know, setting up new courts and setting up specialized courts. What else can be done to ensure, you know, speedy disposal of cases? For example, when I was reading the committee report on the 2015 bill, one of the things that the committee recommended was, you know, uh, how do you ensure that consumers can directly fight their cases without having recourse to lawyers up to a certain set of, you know, uh, up to a certain type of cases, so that the cases don't get entangled in the legal processes. Are there any other suggestions? No, I mean, you see, what we are looking at is uh, there should be prompt redressal within the internal mechanism of redressal within the companies so that the consumers do not have to rush to the court for redressal. And we want to watch that, you know, and we have been always saying that, you know, uh, the expenditure incurred even by the company or by the consumer is at the end of the day is a burden on the consumer. So the legal expenditure should be reduced as much as possible so that the product becomes more affordable, accessible by the consumers and there is a very fair competition at the marketplace which enables consumers to access best quality products at the most affordable price. Thank you. So clearly the Consumer Protection Bill aims to ensure a protected consumer and a responsible seller. I thank, you all of, uh, I thank all of you for joining me on this discussion. It's now time for us to end the show. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.